All right, let's play something cool like this. So all I'm doing here is um, combining a simple progression, four, three, two, one, meaning that in the key of C I'm playing the four chord, the three chord, the two chord, and the one chord. And when I use those numbers, I'm just talking about the order in which they appear in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So it's F major seven, which is eight, ten, nine, eight. All of these chords I'm giving you, by the way, um, disregard your E strings. They all start on your A string and end on your B string. So we got 8, 10, 9, 8. That's F major 7. We got 7, 9, 7, 8. That's E minor 7. We got 5, 7, 5, 6. That's D minor 7. And then we got 3, 5, 4, 5. And that's C major 7. So your one chord, the first chord in your scale, which is based off of C, and your four chord are both the same shape, and then your two middle chords are also the same shape. Now the whole thing with that, um, with that uh, riff um, in your left hand, there's actually not much going on. It's really going to depend on your guitar. This is a very wide-necked guitar, um, and it's very simple for me to use my pinky on it. Other guitars, this would kind of be impossible on. But um, a lot of it is sort of this trilling motion. Which is a really cool thing that you see a lot of people do in this genre. That kind of thing. Um, but I'm doing sort of a simpler version of it that's not so carpal tunnel-y. <laughs> so um, what's going on here is um, you're going to use your right hand, and first you're going to arpeggiate the chord. Um, now that's just fancy music theory talk for play each note one at a time. Right? Now what I'm doing is I'll hit the whole chord, and I'm going to hammer my pinky on to that last note. And then my top three fingers here are going to just sort of pop those three, um, the D, G, and B string, right? So you do the whole four strings, and then you're hammering on your pinky, and then your pinky comes off, and you just hit it twice. Now when I'm going down the whole progression, I'm just kind of doing it once. And there, I'm going to switch the hammer on to my pinky on the G string instead of my pinky on the B string. So when I go to that E minor 7, I'm hammering on from the 7th fret to the 9th fret, and then back off. Right? And then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm, I'm doing the hammer on on the G string instead. And then back here, I'm back up to doing the hammer on on the B string. Now, if you don't use your pinky a lot, this might take a little bit of practice, so go slow with it. I'm oh, sorry. Right, just to kind of build it up. You really want to have a solid base with your hand here, because if you're, if you've got, um, you know, a lot of support. Using that pinky, you're actually not going to feel it too much because your hand feels really confident in how it's holding the chord. Right? Oops. Um, so once you once you kind of get used to that technique, let me try to put it in frame here. Um, you can you know experiment. I mean, there I am just doing the hammer-on on the E string and the B string, right? 
And here I'm just putting my pinky in. But you could maybe move. You could also just move these top three fingers across string sets. But it's really fun, you know, it's kind of like that funky neo soul kind of thing. Um, there's, a, there's all sorts of things you could do with it, but I just wanted to show you the groove I was kind of... the groove I was messing around with. All right, hope that gives you all some ideas.